Hey, hey guys, it is me again, Angela Smith of the Anjanelle Online Sewing University, where we help you to master the basics, build your skill set and confidence, and create some of the hottest trends. And we do it all virtually. So this is the part two of my intro to draping course. And we're going to just get straight into it. But there are some things that I want you to keep in mind as we go through this draping course, okay? When you're draping, I want you to think about how will I get in and out of this garment? That's very important. Where will the seams be? Where will you be sewing? Will you just have side seams or will you have seams in the front? Will you have seams going down the middle of your back? You have to be mindful of where the seams will be. Also, if any areas are going to be exposed, for example, having the full back out or having a low cleavage, how will the top hold up, okay? So these are things that I want you to keep in mind and it will all make sense as we dive in, some things that you need to know about draping that you may not know is that you're making all of your garments inside out. Not only are you making your garments inside out when you're draping them on the mannequin, you're also making them on the opposite side. What that means is because it's inside out, whatever you do on this side will actually fit to this side of the body. And you'll see what I mean um, as we get into it. You're only going to be making half of the garment and because of proportions, right? Your left side should be exactly the same as your right side. All you have to do is multiply by two for identical pieces. So if we make the left half of the front you know that if you put the fabric on fold, it'll automatically be the same on both sides. Now you have your full front piece. All right, so I wanted to lay all of that out there. Um, we're just gonna do our first draping with muslin because with this particular course, yes, it's draping, but you're also learning a different way to make patterns, okay? If you remember all of the courses in the beginning, we just had the muslin kind of lay out on the table and we drew all of our patterns on there. Well, this is going to teach you how to make the pattern using the mannequin, okay? Um, if you remember in the part one of this video, it's very important that you get a mannequin that's your size of or the size of majority of your clients. I promise you, you will have way more fun if you get a mannequin that's your size, especially if you plan on doing a lot of garments for yourself. This was my very first mannequin that um, I received. I ordered through my fashion school that I went to. I'm no longer a size 12. I'm actually much smaller. However, I can make all of the edits to the garments um, after I take it off, okay? So, let's get into it. What all will you need for this course? You're gonna need muslin. As you can see, I have a whole lot of muslin because I use a lot of muslin um, when I was designing for clients. Every single one of their patterns I made with muslin, just like I'm teaching you. Scissors, I have my big scissors here, but um, you also may want a smaller pair of scissors and you'll see why. I always have my measuring tape around my neck. You're gonna need a pencil, just a regular pencil. You're going to need your pens, of course, and that's it. All right, so let's get into it. What I'm, the, the type of top that I'm going to show you guys today is going to be a top that has a very low cut in the front and in the back, okay? So this type of garment, typically you cannot wear just like a regular bra with, okay? You can't wear a bra at all. You have to have those little pasties to wear this type of top. And I came up with this idea because originally I was just gonna show you how to make a, a regular front pattern but then I said, well, I already showed them how to make front patterns. I didn't want to repeat any lessons. So I want to do this type of top. I know that this top isn't for everybody, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And I want you to grab the nuggets from it. Okay. So let's get into it. First, I'm going to 
just kind of unravel my muslin because I have a lot. You guys, you might not have as much as me. I'm just going to kind of throw mine on the floor and I'm going to grab one layer um, of my muslin. When you first start draping, you always want to use the straightest edge as possible, okay? Which is typically, you'll know the straightest edge of your muslin and the same with your fabric even though i'm not teaching you how to drape on fabric just yet okay so the type of top that i'm going to show you how to make today is going to go about really low like this okay i know that that's a little risky but let's go ahead and get into it okay so the first thing you want to do for the straightest seam so because i'm going to have a cut here okay a low cut here you want to make sure it's as straight and as even as possible, right? Because that's what's really going to make it a statement piece is how crisp it is. So this is right above the belly button because this is what? Your waistline. So I'm just going to pull some and let's get into it. I'm just going to take some of my fabric and just kind of hold it on my shoulder and I'm going to play around with it to see exactly how I want the top to fall. And what I mean by that is, even though it's a deep cut, I can get it closer to my neck or I can take it closer to the shoulders. Okay, so it's all on you and how you want it. I'm going to take it closer to the shoulder. Again, I know, very, very risque. So what we're gonna do if you notice, I'm not taking the corner of my fabric and lining it directly up with the shoulder, okay? Typically, if you're making um, a front pattern, you don't want to line it up here because what about this area? You want to go over the shoulder, okay? So we're going over the shoulder, right? And what I'm going to do after I just kind of play around with what I want it to look like, I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to put it in there. I'm gonna put my foot down so that my mannequin does not move a lot. So I'm going right here to the waistline. Now be mindful with the bust around this center line right here would be your nipple. So I'm being mindful of that when I'm draping this top on, we don't want the nipple to slip, right? So we wanna make sure it's a low cut, but it's still covering that private area, okay? So I have that pinned on, I have a pin here, I have a pin up top. When you, so next what we're gonna do is I'm just going to take my scissors, I'm taking my big scissors, and I'm just going to cut. I'm gonna hold this up straight, and I'm going to cut a little lower than my actual waist measurement. And I'm just gonna cut and just kind of make a big square. You just want enough to cover your side, okay? I want to make sure you can see that. All right, perfect. So next what we're going to do is we're going, I'm just going to turn it a little bit so you can see here. We're going to pull this. Now, we're not going to pull it like this. We can, we can. It all depends on how you want, again, your seams and what we're creating here is a dart. Do we want a dart here at the bus going towards the armpit? Or do we want a saint or a dart, I'm sorry, here underneath the bust, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dart on my side, the side of the bust. So if that's the case, I'm going to basically just tug at this very lightly, very, very lightly. And I'm going to make that as smooth as possible. Do you see how it's contouring to the body? And what I'm going to do if you remember, you can feel the little notch of the side seam. At the back of that notch, I'm going to put my pin, okay? And you can do that for the entire side seam. 
your mannequin. Um, it should be very easy for you to put pins in it. And we're just going to go up. And now, if, as you can just see, what I'm doing is I'm shifting the bulk of the fabric, okay? So the bulk of the fabric is now right here towards the arm, where the arm would be. So we're going to go, just going to pull that out the way. Going to put another pin in there. And now, as you can see, it started to kind of crease for me. It started to crease a little bit. So if I want this to be smooth, if I want this to be one solid piece, I'm going to go ahead and feed into that. So I'm just pinching it a little bit. And my pins now are going to secure that dart. Okay. I want to make sure you can see that good. All right. Now we're up here at the armhole. I'm going to put a pin right at the armhole. And if you remember, there's a metal piece here for my arm. That's how I knew we were at the armhole. There's also some indentions in here. You can just feel it. Okay. You can feel it as you go. So what I'm going to do. I have my dart in there, it, it can't move. It's pinned the way that I have it pinned and you can put as many pins as you need. No, nothing is too much or too little, okay? So we're just securing that dart. Look at how crisp that looks. Then what we're going to do, you can lay your dart down or you can move it up, it doesn't really matter. I'm just making sure that the fabric is as smooth as possible because what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna cut it and you want to cut it you see this seam right here we're not gonna stop the fabric on this side you want to overlap so we're gonna stop the fabric on this side and we're going to do about an inch what I'm doing you guys is I'm working in basically the seam allowance I'm gonna already have it in here so that when I transfer this to my fabric, whatever fabric I decide to use, the seam allowance is already there. I don't have to go around my pattern and add the seam allowance. It'll already be there. So I can just get to work and be mindful that you're adding one inch. If you like to do more seam allowance because you don't know how it'll fit, do about two inches. I like doing one inch. And then you're going to surge it off if it's too much. So I'm just going up as carefully as I can. I've made it to, I'm trying to pull that back so that no one is confused. I'm gonna just pin it back there. Okay, that dart, I have it laying down. I'm just gonna hold it and I'm gonna continue my cut. And we're only gonna cut till we get to the armhole, which is now, we're at the armhole. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go around our armhole. This is where your pencil comes in handy. Now, because I want you guys to be able to see for teaching purposes, I'm going to use chalk. And I'm going to use, oh y'all disregard my nails. I'm going to use just a regular piece of school chalk. I do uh, school with my kids. So I'm just going to do just regular school chalk because it's the brightest that I could find for you guys to really be able to see. See how bold that pink is? Don't be like me, you guys. This is just for teaching purposes. Keep that in mind. Just for teaching purposes. I'm just doing a circle, going with the shape of the armhole that's already here. The reason why I'm going with the shape of the armhole that's already there is again, because this mannequin is my size. Now, if you take your measuring tape around this circle and the armhole is too small, then of course you can alter that. But you can alter that after you create the pattern, okay? Just like I taught you pattern corrections before. So I'm just carefully going to now cut. 
And I did a full circle, but keep in mind, I don't need a full circle because there's going to be a seam on the top. So again, I'm gonna bring my camera closer. On the top here, you see that there's a seam. Again, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna cut directly on the seam because I want that seam allowance. I'm going to go an inch back this way. Then I'm going to cut. So let's show you what that looks like. Uh-oh. Gonna take my measuring tape. As y'all can see again, I keep it around my neck. It's just more accessible to me that way. And where I cut my armhole, I'm gonna go an inch from that seam and cut with my seam allowance. Okay. So let's talk about this dart. And look at that, y'all. One half of the front of this top is already done. Already done. Now, I was a little bit off right there on that armhole. I'm gonna fix that curve. I'm literally just going around the curve that's already there. I'm using their pattern. Look at that, there's no bulk. Everything is laying down extremely flat. And now let's talk about this dart right here. How do we remember to sew that when it's time to sew? Again, this is where your pencil is going to kick in. You're gonna take your pencil, make a mark on the top of your dart. And you should know what a dart looks like. Um, it just looks like a triangle. And go on the bottom. Again, almost forgot. For teaching purposes, let's do it in pink. So if we fold the dart down, we flip it down for a second, I'm just gonna make a mark. Gonna make a line. And of course you can straighten it up with a ruler. Okay, then after we make the line on the top, let's flip it up. We know that this is gonna be at, at a point, okay? A sharp point. But up here on the top or underneath, I'm sorry, the dart, we're gonna do that exact same thing. Make a line, try to go around your pins. And you see, I'm actually getting pretty straight <laughs> with mine. So let's look at what that looks like. Let's take our pins out. And guess what? Because we're making this garment inside out, when it's time to sew, I'm literally gonna keep that fold and I'm just going to sew it just as it looks. Fold your top in and sew it. So let's take all of these out. Let's, let's look at what it looks like. taking every pin out. And of course, you can label. You can put the name on here with your pencil just as we did before. If you need to, for memory purposes, you can label shoulder at the top. You can label side seams, just like what we've done before when I was teaching you pattern making, okay? Let's take this off. Let's see what it looks like. Got some little loose strings here. Let me just cut those. I don't want to confuse anybody, okay? So this is our front pattern, guys. Do you see that? That is a dart. So when it's time for you to sew that, all you're going to do, fold it in just like it looked on a mannequin. You're gonna line up the pink here with the pink on the other side. Line those two up together go to your point and you will literally stitch from here to here. That will be your dart for your front, okay? And then on the, on the right side, keep in mind, this is the right side. We're making all of our markings on the wrong side. So even when you um, lay your fabric down, the fabric that you're gonna use, your cheetah print or whatever you use, you're gonna lay this down, you're gonna cut it, on the straightest edge, right? You're going to make your markings for this dart. 
Do you remember at the beginning of the courses, I taught you to get a rotary cutter? A rotary cutter? It's like, not a rotary cutter, I'm sorry. It is um, the, the cutting wheel. The, the cutting wheel. You're going to just, tra the tracing wheel. Oh, y'all, please forgive me. It's called a tracing wheel. When you lay this on your fabric, okay? You're, you can take your tracing wheel and roll it over this dart. And that also is something that you can use to remember to add your dart in there. You can make markings on your real fabric, but keep in mind it is your real fabric. So you really don't want to do a lot of markings on it, especially if it's for a client. You could take your tracing wheel and go in there. So let's put this back on the mannequin. Exactly as it was. And guess what? Because we have this piece, we automatically have the piece for the opposite side. This is what I was telling you about. You're gonna make it for the opposite side. Two identical pieces for the opposite side. Then this side seam, you see how mine is a little jagged? For one, it's jagged here because of the dart. I'm gonna pin it back on so you can see. We're gonna put our dart back in there, match the pink up with the pink. Put the pins back in, and you see how the side seam automatically started back straightening out? It's because the only thing that was causing it to not be extremely straight was this dart. So we're putting that dart back in there. So again, we have the garment. Let me put the side seams back in. And we are back to what we just finished. Okay, pretty simple. I'm just teaching you a simple design. Now, if you notice, we did not add seam allowance to the front. With this cut, you can either add what's called bias tape. That means it will fall exactly in this exact same spot on your body and you finish it up with a bias tape trim. You might be uh, familiar with that from previous courses. You can go in and add one to two inches so that you can hem it on the front. At this point, the finishes are all up to you. You can finish it however you want. I think a hem would be really pretty, but again, we did not add allowance. So you will have to add the allowance yourself or the bias tape. The bias tape will give it a pop of color or um, if you're already using a solid color, let's say your blouse is going to be red and you can find bias tape the exact same red color, that would be perfect. It would be a really, really clean finish. At the end of the day, you just want your finish to be really clean because with this type of garment, like I said, this is a statement piece. It is going to stand out. You don't want anything crooked here. So if you're not good yet at hemming, um, if you don't know how to uh, grab an iron and hem and press it down really, really straight, use bias tape, okay? So we have this, again, identical. If you do not want a seam in this little part right here, then you want to make sure you lay this pattern on fold only this little part at the bottom and you can even make notes to yourself guys on fold and where would you want the v to actually fall do you want the v to go up a little bit higher do you want the v all the way down here right above the belly button at the waistline wherever you want it to be on fold you could just make a little mark to let them know, hey, this part is going to be on fold, okay? Or not let them know, to let, you, let yourself know. All right, so let's get into the back of this. So when we do the back of draping this top, we're literally going to do it on the same side, okay? So we did, this is the right side of my mannequin. On the back, this is the right side of my mannequin, okay? 
And the reason why you're going to do that is because you want to see how the top is going to connect. So let's go ahead and turn her around to the back. And when we turn her around to the back, we're gonna start back with the muslin. Grab some more muslin. And you're literally going to do the exact same approach. I told you guys, this top that I'm designing is a little risque um, because we have a low back and we have a low front, but we're gonna run with it, okay? So let me go to the other side <laughs> really quick. I'm gonna walk around her because I don't wanna be in you guys' way. All right, so now, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna grab my muslin. Again, finish my sentence. The straightest edge as possible is what we're gonna take. And it may be better if you're a beginner to just grab maybe about a yard and a half of muslin at a time. Because if you saw how much yards of muslin I had down here on the floor that I'm unrolling, you'll be like just confused off of that alone, okay? So just cut you about a yard and a half to two yards depending on your size. Now what I'm going to do, the straightest edge, I'm going back to my shoulder and I'm going to again overlap by one inch. What's going to happen is my two shoulders, I'm going to be able to pin those together and see exactly how it's going to look. So I'm just gonna overlap it I'll pin it. Okay, make sure it's one inch over, which is not. So I'm going one inch over the seam that they have identified as the shoulder seam, okay? Like what I showed you on the front. We're going to, how low do we want the back? of this top, okay? The, the front is already pretty low, but as I said, this top is a little risque. I wanted to give you guys something different. I'm gonna pull that just a little bit, and I'm gonna put my pin right in the back. Again, I did not give myself any seam allowance for this. I went with the straightest, the straightest edge now, if I wanted to give myself seam allowance, I'll show you what that looks like as well. I would take that straight edge, fold it back by one inch, okay? I would fold that back by one inch and then do the exact same process. So I would give myself one inch, I would pin it here, I would pin it on top. That way, when I start to create this garment, I know that one inch has already been added to my seam allowance, and now I can do my hem on my real fabric. I will be doing the hem, and it will look just very clean when it's time for you to finish up the garment, okay? So I'm giving you different examples here. All right, let me pull back out my measuring tape and make sure that I'm crossing over that shoulder seam by one inch. Okay, put my pan in there. Put my pan back in the bottom. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the front. After I have some markings here, I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to cut. I'm gonna cut right past the waistline. This is just so that I'm not dragging all 50 yards or whatever of muslin I have down here with me okay so i just cut it off i did the exact same thing on the beginning if you remember and then we're just going to smooth it out with our hand bring it to the side seam just as we did before 
And again, where your side seam is, where you see those notches, we're not gonna stop on the side of the mannequin. We're not gonna uh, stop on this side of the seam. We're not gonna stop exactly on top of the seam. We're going to overlap by one inch because we're working in the seam allowance. So basically with this garment, we work in the seam allowance everywhere but where the cuts are, okay? So you can make a note of that. You can make a note of that when it's time for you to put the pattern on your real material. I'm gonna go all the way up to the what? Armhole. Now what you may wanna do, and I don't know why I didn't do this, <laughs> what you may wanna do temporarily is undo your back pattern. You don't wanna accident, I mean your front pattern. You don't wanna accidentally cut it. So before we pin the back, we're gonna remove some pins. I'm not gonna remove my dart. I'm gonna leave my dart. And I'm just gonna pin that out of my way. Just pin it out of my way, just like that. Now let's pick back up. Okay, so we have that lined up in the back. We're overlapping our side seam of our mannequin. We're gonna throw some pins in there just like we did before. We're gonna take those pins up to the armhole well, we're gonna start working our way up to the armhole, keeping all of this smooth, as smooth as possible because it's contouring to the body, right? Then, now as you can see in here, we may have a small dart on top or we can do that same dart on the back. The same dart like what we did in the front. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that off. Just gonna maneuver my pattern. And you may not even have to do that because you have to understand the only reason why we needed a dart was because the front of the pattern or the front of your body, you have a bust. <laughs> On the back, you don't, okay? So you're not gonna have fabric bulging out like you did. And if you do, it'll be a very, it'll be a much smaller amount. So. Gonna just take my hand, I'm just smoothing it out. I'm not pulling it, I'm just smoothing it out. Putting my pins in there. And it looks like for the back, I might not need a dart. Have to play around with it and see, I'm gonna cut that. Yeah, for the back, I'm going to need a dart, but let's keep playing around with it. Just gonna throw that fabric up there. And if I do, it looks like it'll be really, really small and I can do the dart on top and that's okay. You can put your darts wherever you want. If you don't like the dart right here, it'll be towards the back, right at the shoulder. If you don't like that, you can try to work it in under here. It'll be going in a different direction. I wanna do something different. I'm gonna do a dart on the top just to show you guys something new. So again, I'm gonna take my pencil. Well, for you, you're gonna take your pencil and I'm gonna take my chalk. As you can see, I cut it a little bit too short, but that's okay. I can fix that. You gotta understand, everything is fixable. At least you're doing it on muslin instead of on your real fabric. I would have never even just started cutting if this was my real fabric, okay? We're going one inch over. Well, we're actually gonna cut it or, sorry guys. We're actually going to make our markings directly on the side seams up till we get to the armhole, okay? But we're going to cut it at the one inch mark to give ourselves what? Seam allowance. Everybody say it with me, seam allowance. Okay, so I'm just gonna move that out of my way. If, if it's ever in your way, y'all just pin it out your way. Pin your fabric out of your way. Bring this up closer for you. And we're gonna cut right here 
at one inch. Until we get to our armhole. Take your pencil. And what are we doing, guys? We're going around the armhole. Even though we're not going to need the full circle, keep in mind we're only doing half the pattern. We already did this part of the armhole. So we're just doing the back half. My mannequin is rolling. I'm just gonna cut the full circle even though we don't need the full circle. Keep in mind, you're only doing half of the pattern. So, this is what we have. Again, we can straighten that up. You just wanna make sure you have one inch of allowance. It is sort of hard to cut, uh, especially when I'm recording. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to cut. So it's a little jagged and that's okay. We'll clean that up. And plus, that's allowance. That's going to be um, evened up on your sewing, on your serger anyway. Okay? So then we're back up here to this top shoulder. What are we going to do here? Snip that to go around. And actually, if you can tell, I ended up not needing a dart at all on the back. I did not need a dart at all on the back. If you did need a dart, you would do it the exact same way. Pinch it like we did before. Make your marking on this side, flip it down. Make your marking on that side to come to a point and you will have the same type of dart that you had on the front. Now, let's get into finishing this up, okay? Keep in mind, your back piece is going to be exactly the same. So what are you gonna do? Where you want your seam, you're gonna make a little mark uh, where you want it on fold, and you have two pieces. Or, I mean, and you have one full piece. With this, with the top being so low the way that it is, I would probably do two pieces, one on the front, one on the back. I would probably do a very, very small seam because the goal was for the top to be very, very low, okay? So I would probably just put my other piece, which would be identical to this, on top of this, right sides together, and my stitch will literally be that small. It's not even, that's about an inch and a half to the end of the garment to here. So about an inch and a half is what I would do. That's just me personally for this type of top, okay? We're gonna leave our pin here. We're gonna take the pin out on top, take the pin out for the front piece and the back piece, and look at what we're going to do. Put those two together. What will you have? One inch seam allowance. It should be perfect. It should be perfectly one inch. Put your pin in there. Even though it's very, very small seam, I'm gonna do two. And you see how it pokes up like that? That's how it's supposed to look at all of your seams when you're draping. That lets you know when I put this on the sewing machine and I stitch that together, then you can press that out either flat or together, surge that off after you do your stitch. Now, what I used to always do was I used to get all of my muslin together first. Like, let's say I was designing for a client. I would do this part and I would literally sew the muslin. That's one of the things. That's one of the reasons why I teach you guys how to use muslin instead of the paper for making patterns and stuff like that. Because I'm going to tell you what I did for clients. 
I would do this part. This is the, the harder part because this is making a pattern. And what I would do is when my clients come over for their first fitting, I would have them to try on the muslin. I would make all of my corrections to the muslin. Think about how that would go if you used your regular fabric to drape. You went to put it on the, the client. You did your first fitting and it didn't fit. Oh my God. What if it's too small? How are you going to add more fabric? I'm going to tell you now, it's better for it to be too big than too small. I tell people that all the time when they were reaching out to me about alterations. Oh, I have these pants. They're small. Can you just add a strip of fabric? No, ma'am. It does not work that way. Okay, have those together. And look at that, guys. We have an entire half. We have an entire half of a top done. We have our front. This is how it would look. We have our back. This is how it would look. We have our shoulder seam. We have our side seam. That's it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make this top from beginning to end because I want you guys to see what this top is going to look like. So stay tuned to the next part of the draping video. Bye for now.